Hi, Mark Ufi here to talk about using the Time Library in Python with the Guess My Number program. Okay, so here's the Guess My Number program from uh, page 33 in Head First Programming. And if we run it, this is what we get. Okay, I'll guess uh, 50 because I know the number is between 1 and 100. That's too low. Okay, how about 75? That's too low. How about 82? That's too low. Okay, how about 90? That's too low. Okay, how about 95? That's too low. How about 98? That's too high. Well, that doesn't leave a lot left. Let's try 96. That's too low. It must be 97. Okay, that took a while, but how long? Wouldn't it be make the uh, Guess My Number program just a little bit more interesting if we could say how long it took the contestant to play the game. Okay, so the uh, Head First Programming uh, book shows you a little bit about the time library. It lists a number of uh, functions that are in the time library. But it's nice to know more than that. It's nice to know everything there is to know about the time library, maybe. Or well, maybe less than that, but maybe there's stuff in there in the time library that isn't in the book that you'd like to find out about. How can you find out more on your own? Also, suppose the class is over. Suppose you loaned your book out and somebody didn't return it. Don't you hate when that happens? Well, what you can do now, thanks to the power of the Internet, is you can go to Google. Here's the key to opening up your world. So you know there's a time library and you know it's in Python. You put those two keywords together and you do a search on it. And when you do that search, the first hit at the top uh, will be from uh, python.org. It's the official documentation on Python and the time library. Don't be turned off by it talking about uh, version 2.7. The, uh, the time module is not limited to 2.7. That's just when it first became offered. Okay, so we have in here all kinds of information on time access and conversions, and there's so much more to time than you might imagine. For example, today's date. How many different ways can you think of for that date and time to be represented? I mean, it could be September 20th, 2012. It could be 9 slash 20 slash 2012. Maybe you're dealing with somebody in Europe, and it could be uh, Europeans would note the uh, date as 20 slash 9 slash 2012. And then, well, okay, we want to see when our program started, our game uh, or guess my number program, and when did en when it ended. You don't want to have to use the date and subtract the seconds and the hours and the and uh, the minutes and the day of the year and all that stuff from uh, the start and finish. You want to deal in something more simple, like uh, like this guy here. Time is is so much of an issue in computer science that computer scientists defined an epoch. And the, the epoch they define starts in 1970. So time can be represented as the total number of seconds since uh, the start of the epoch in 1970. All right, so that's, that's um, one of the things to know about. You also have universal time. That's Greenwich Mean Time. You've got daylight savings time, all this good stuff. And then there's a table here that there's actually more other ways to express time rather than in seconds since the epic because very often you want the the month and the day of the week and and the date and the current hour of the day and things like that that can be returned as a structure okay so this convenient table tells you here if you have the seconds and you want to convert it to a structure you can use GM time or you can use local time but if you have this structure and you want to convert it to seconds, then you have these two choices here. Uh, so we'll be working with local time and MK time. Okay, and this shows you how to use these functions. Um, 
here's local time. So the square brackets here are telling you that optionally you can include a number of seconds. All right, but if you don't include the number of seconds, it will re return the current time um, in your locale, your local time. Okay, how do we use this thing? So let's uh, go back to our Python program. First thing you have to do is you have to import time. So in this while loop, that's where all the time is going to be taken up, guessing new numbers and finding out they're too high or too low. And the only way we get out of the while loop is when we've guessed correctly. So down here is when our end time will be. So our start time will be here and our end time will be there. And meanwhile, the clock inside the computer is ticking, ticking, ticking. So we want to get the time when we start our guesses and then the time when we finish our guesses, subtract the, finished, the start time from the finish time and the difference will be how long it took. And we can do this in terms of the epic time. So we can get the number of seconds since 1970 when we started our program and the number of seconds since 1970 when we ended our program and uh, subtract the, the start time from the end time and the difference will be the number of seconds it took to make all of our guesses. Okay, so let's go with start time equals time dot local time. All right, now the documentation will tell you that this returns a time struct. All right, so let's see what that uh, looks like. Local time. Um, all right, somewhere in here it tells you about the uh, time struct. And this is what it looks like, nine pieces of information. All right, and, and there's our, our attribute names for each one. So for example, we can get the, um, we could get, for example, the weekday. Let's see how we would use this. Okay, so our program, we've got right here, I've got the start time. I could print start time dot and what was that thing called? It was called TM underscore uh, W day where Monday is zero. Okay, so let's go back to that. TM underscore W day for weekday. Let's see what we get. So when I run this, I'm going to interrupt it with control C. We're not going to do the whole program. We just want to see the output of the weekday. Today happens to be Tuesday when I'm recording this anyway. There we go. Uh, that said three. And that's because today is actually Thursday. So if I can ever figure out the day of the week, I'll be dangerous. So uh, three for Thursday, and that's, that's how we were able to uh, get that information. All right, but that's not what we want to know. What we want to know are the number of seconds since the epic, right? So instead what we'll do is we'll convert this start time equals time dot mk time start time. Okay, uh, that and the reason we use an mk time is because that was listed in uh, that table that we looked at for conversion way back here. So if you want to convert from struct time in local time to seconds since the epic, we can use MK time. All right, and that's what I'm doing with that. Uh, well, first let's cancel out of that running of the program. Just make things a little cleaner. So that's how we do it. We pass in the start time. We don't need this guy here anymore. And that'll give us the number of seconds since the uh, epic, which you can imagine is a pretty big number. Let's see what that is. Print 
start time. Okay, we'll run that. There we go, that's a lot of seconds, but we don't care how many seconds it is. It's going to be even more seconds when we finish running the program. We just care about the difference. Let's see how we do that. Um, here we go. We don't need to print it anymore. We'll take that out. We'll copy what we did to get the start time. We'll scroll down to when we finally get the number right. So the only way we can get out of the loop is when we guess the number right. And we'll come down here to do our computation. Except we're now getting the current end time. It's always going to return the current time. And seconds pass by, right? And you're thinking, gosh, a lot of seconds have passed by since we started this video. But we won't get into that. Okay, so we get the, the end time game over and then we can spice up our game a little bit you guessed the number in just uh, start time oops and time minus start time Um, so that'll give us the number of second, seconds. Alright, so you can provide more than one parameter to uh, print, separate them by commas, um, and that can help your output a little bit. But we'll do, be doing a lot fancier stuff than that with output as we move along, so I'm not going to get into all the nuances of what you can do uh, in unformatted output. Okay, let's see what we get. We'll run it. Guess the number. I'll say 50. Too high. Okay, 25. Too high. Okay, 12. Too low. Okay, 19. Too low. Okay, 22. You guessed the number in just 13 seconds. Okay, so let's review a little bit of what we, uh, we did here. We learned to work with... Uh, the time, time library. We learned where to find more information about the time library. In particular, we learned about the epoch and the number of seconds since 1970. We learned about um, a structure you can get back that has a more friendlier information like the current year and day of the week and things like that. And we learned to spice up our, our uh, game a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting with how long it took to uh, run the game. And we learned how to reuse code. That's what we do every time we use a library. Somebody else wrote all this code for us uh, and we can just take advantage of that. So I hope that helped.